Hello, everybody, and welcome to the problem walkthrough of 18-8. So here we've got um, Colbert resells 3D printer systems. Uh, recently, Colbert provided a special promotion of zero interest financing for two years on any new 3D printer system. Assume that Colbert sells Lyle Cartwright a 3D system receiving a $5,000 zero interest bearing note on January 1st, 2020. The cost of the printer system is 4,000. Colbert uh, imputes a 6% interest rate on this zero interest note transaction. Prepare the journal entry to record the sale on January 1st and then compute the total amount of revenue to be recognized in 2020. Okay, so let's go ahead and do part A first. So if I'm selling something, I'm getting $5,000 in two years. So when I record this on January 1st, 2020, I do not debit accounts receivable, do not credit revenue. Rather, what I'm gonna be doing here is I'm gonna be debiting notes receivable for 5,000. I know that I'm gonna to have to credit something for sales revenue. And at the same time, because there is a zero interest note rate transaction, and there is a 6%, if I'm imputing it 6%, I'm gonna have a discount on notes receivable. And that's because part of that sale relates to, um, part of the sale basically relates to is really interest. So this 5,000 really represents interest and the sale and basically the revenue. I know that I also have to take the uh, amount off my books or the inventory off my books. So I'm gonna credit debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory. And this will be 4,000 and then 4,000. So to figure out the amount of sales revenue that I need to go through and record, I need to present value this amount back. So to present value this back, so the amount in two years is $5,000. The table I'm gonna use, because it is a lump sum amount, I'm gonna get a present value of a dollar. This is gonna be two periods or two years at 6%. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll go to my present value table. If I go to two periods at 6%, what I end up with is 0.89. So two periods at 6%, 0.89. So the value of this today is going to be 5,000 times 0.89. So my present value is going to be 4,450. So I will record sales revenue of 4,450. Now, the important thing here is that the, the difference is gonna be this discount on notes receivable or 5,000 less the 44.50 that I recorded as sales revenue, and then that's gonna be my discount. Okay. Now, for those of you who are still having difficulty with present value, it's okay. If I take my principal, basically year one, year two, why do I have to use this present value? Because right over here, So at an interest rate of 6%, my interest here is 267. When I add that interest to my principal, my ending balance is 4717. That becomes my beginning balance for the following year. Again, using 6%, my interest here is 283. When I add up these two amounts together, I get the $5,000. So that's really the importance of understanding why, how this works. So, and it says to record all the revenue. Now I'm gonna have one other piece of revenue, which is basically going to be interest revenue because I have to amortize this discount on notes receivable. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna debit discount on notes receivable, and I'm going to be crediting over here uh, interest revenue. Now to figure out the amount of the amount that I'm gonna be amortizing, 
I take my carrying value of my note, which is my notes receivable, less the discount. My discount here is 550. This is gonna give me notes receivable net of 4,450. I take my interest rate of 6%, my interest revenue is going to be the sum of these two or the multiplying 6% by 4450 or 267. So right over here, I've got 267 and 267. If I'm doing this for the following year, my discount was amortized by 267. My notes receivable net is 4717, 6%, 283. Once this note is paid off, this discount has been, once this gets amortized to this, the amount goes to zero. Okay, so that's the first part over here. Just remember if you see something that's being paid over a period of two years without interest on it, we have to impute interest. Okay, let's go to the next one over here. So the total revenue to be recognized will be 4450 plus this 267. Okay, so letter B, Colbert sells 20 non-refundable $100 gift cards for 3D printer paper on March 1st. The paper has a standalone selling price of 100, cost is 80, the gift card's expiration is June 30th. So uh, Colbert estimates that its customers will not redeem 10% of these cards. The pattern of redemption is as follows. So when I look at this here in terms of the redemption, so it's you want to kind of be, let's just make sure we kind of have our ducks in a row here. So I sell these, I sell 20 gift cards on March 31st. So I sold these. So on 315 or on March 31st, basically redeemed. So half of these were redeemed or 50% right here. So this is gonna be 10. So this is 50% times uh, 20 or 10. On April 30th, there was another 30% redeemed, right? Why am I saying 30%? Because the total redemption went from 30 to 50 to 80. So 80% minus 50% already redeemed is 30% for April. So basically it's going to be 30% times 20 or six, okay. So lastly over here we have on June 30th, right? This is now at 85%. So we have basically 85% minus the 80% that were previously redeemed. equals 5% for June, basically or this 5% times 20 or a total of one. Okay, so my amount of unredeemed gift cards is going to be three. Why is that? Well, I sold 20 here I have these various redemptions here totaling 20. So unredeemed was three. And this is important because your book solution's wrong. So when I look at this here, so I've sold 20 non-refundable $100 gift cards on March 1st. The paper has a standalone selling price of 100 bucks, cost of 80. Gift cards expiration is on June 30th. And Colbert estimates that customers will not redeem 10% of these gift cards. So Prepare the journal entries related to the gift cards as of March 1st, March 31st, April 30th, and June 30th. So the first thing we're gonna go through and do is we're gonna basically say here on 3120, we got some money. So here we got cash and I sold 20 gift cards, non-refundable $20 gift cards for a hundred bucks each. So then what I'm doing over here is I'm crediting this as unearned revenue. So I don't do anything with cost of goods sold as of yet. It 
So I now come over here to my next date, which is gonna be March 31st. So in this case right over here, what am I debiting? I'm gonna be debiting unearned revenue. The amount of unearned revenue I'm going to be debiting is gonna be 10 cards that were redeemed here in March, 10 times 100 or 1,000. I'm gonna record this over here as revenue. I also need to record cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold is 80% of the selling price. So I'm gonna debit cost of goods sold for 80% and I will credit inventory for that amount. Okay, now we get to April 30th. So this would be here to record gift card redemption. Okay, so here on April 30th, I'm redeeming more cards, it's exciting. So I come over here on April 30th. What I'm gonna do here, and I just screwed this up, so we're gonna debit unearned revenue, credit revenue. Okay, there we go. So the amount here that I'm gonna be going through and recording is gonna be six times 100, or six gift cards that were redeemed at $100 a pop. And then my cost of goods sold is gonna be 80% of that amount. Okay. Lastly, now I come down here to June 30th, See if it works now. Well, a little bit better. So here I only redeemed one, right? Okay, so for this part over here, this one gift card that I went through and redeemed, this is gonna be one times 100. And that's my part over here. Now, here's the real question in terms of the unredeemed gift cards. Right, and um, I'm just gonna pause this really quickly because I wanna just kind of explore something with you. So one of the things I wanted to share with you and um, for all of you here in terms of saying that, you know, what happens if I have these unredeemed gift cards? And it actually, it is not something that we may be able to recognize as revenue if we are in a state where we are required to is cheat that property back to the state. So I'm going to copy this link here into, um, into our presentation here today. Okay, so it's cheat liabilities. So one of the things I have to be careful about is that if I have to go through here is what is my requirement? So these, this is really about unclaimed property. And every state has a different set of as cheap in re, uh, regulations, right? So there's no uniform set of laws, okay? So um, what you have to go through and do is as a company, you would have to go through and analyze what your legal requirements are by state before going through and redeeming these. So normally what I would do, right, is that I've got three of them here that are unredeemed. So I would typically go over here, so 630, 20. I would do the same entry here of recognizing the revenue, meaning I would be taking uh, three times 100 and going over here. but you wanna be careful about this because I don't know if I should be recognizing this as revenue or would I have to go say $300 is payable to the state of California. I'm gonna show you all something really kinda of cool here. I'm not even sure if you're gonna be looking at this video, but it's a great way to make friends with people. Okay, so unclaimed property, state of California. So the state of California has basically, if you have uncashed checks or a lot of different things, I can go through here and search for unclaimed property. And so if I go right over here, I'll try Tchaikovsky and see what comes up or actually I'll use my old name. And we'll do a quick little search here. I am not a robot, continue. 
Okay, so over here, you can see over here, this is actually my brother. It's got basically some property over here. And so what you see with this is that all of these uh, different individuals with this last name, they all have um, basically different amounts of unclaimed property. So this is something that um, I actually made several friends at IVC when I first started by sharing with them uh, amounts that were owed to them. And I'm actually gonna do something really kind of cool. I'm actually gonna see if I can help out my Dean. So let's take a look to see if Tracy, oh, let's see here if Tracy's got some, let's do a Tracy. So no match for Tracy, let's try. Um, Okay, so too bad I try to get my Dean some cash, which is always nice to do. She deserves it. Okay, so right over here, um, that's pretty much uh, this one. So just remember like this little trip, little trick on the bottom here. So just make sure that before you recognize that revenue that you're complying with the uh, appropriate state law. All right, everybody, I'll be seeing you soon. Take care.